Hello, and thank you for joining. I'm Joe Lichtenberg. I'm Director of Product and Industry Marketing for our data management software here at InterSystems. And the title of my talk is Data Fabric is the Future of Data Management. And those actually aren't my words, but they're the exact words from a recent Gartner report. And it's consistent with not only what Gartner and the other analysts are hearing from their clients, but it's also what we're hearing from our customers and prospects as well. Data fabrics are the future of data management, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today in my presentation. So I thought if we're going to talk about the future of data management, why not start off by talking about a brief history of data management? So I think we've all seen reference architectures that look a lot like this. There are sets of processes that take raw data from different siloed applications and put them through a set of ETL processes to stage the data and then populate an enterprise data warehouse and then use the normalized data to feed different data marts that all have different data and different views, all to serve different personas and different parts of the business. So there's a fair amount of latency and complexity involved. And while the resulting data is fit for purpose, it's not very good for serving real-time use cases for data exploration or for answering unplanned ad hoc questions from the business. And I'm sure we've all seen implementations that look like this, populating individual data marts directly from the source applications, which typically results in duplication of data, inconsistent data in the different data marts, and different answers depending on which data mart is processing the queries. And of course, these aren't the only approaches to providing the business with access to enterprise data. There are integration platforms and logical data warehouses and data lakes and data ponds and so on and so on. And so all of these approaches clearly have provided value, but they all have fallen short of the ultimate goal, which is to have a single source of accurate, trusted, current, and consistent data that services all areas of the business, answering questions from the business and serving as a single source of data for building new applications and your digital transformation initiatives, ideally all without creating additional copies of the data. So that's what makes this new approach, the enterprise data fabric, so exciting. So it holds the promise to finally provide the business with this single source of data, both real-time and non-real-time, that connects to any sources inside and outside the organization and to help you service a wide range of your consumers, including providing the business with the information it needs to make better decisions, providing your developers with the data they need to streamline operational processes and innovate to develop new applications, and also providing your data scientists with the data they need to build and refine machine learning models, right? All without creating more data silos. So a key attribute of a data fabric is that it's dynamic. Unlike a data lake or a data warehouse, it allows you to access and utilize the data from the various sources and systems on demand without duplicating the data and without creating yet another copy of the data. So if we think about what's involved from a functionality standpoint, there's actually quite a bit. The first point is that it's not a product. You can't buy one. It's a reference architecture that you need to implement using different kinds of data management services based on what it is you're trying to accomplish and what your existing infrastructure, infrastructure looks like. And then the second point is that this architecture eliminates data latencies and supports real-time use cases since it's pulling in the data from the source systems as it's needed and preparing it uh, for use all on demand and in the moment. So what's involved? So there's a lot. There's data connectivity, there's data ingestion, the ability to connect to any silo or system, uh, leveraging a variety of different mechanisms that support different sources like flat files and applications and so forth and over different protocols for both batch data feeds and real-time data, for example, over Kafka or over MQTT. There's data transformation to make the data from different systems uh, in different formats consistent 
and harmonized and usable. There's uh, data pipelining so that you can streamline and automate the data processing steps. And ideally, if you want to have all of the analytics operating directly on the data for the highest performance without moving it to uh, another system for things like uh, performing analytic SQL and business intelligence and business rules and machine learning and natural language processing and business user self-service and data exploration uh, and so on. Right? You'll, you want a consistent semantic layer so that you can provide a consistent representation and metadata layer across all of the data right, that allows you to provide a, a unified and, and consolidated view of the data to the business users and to applications across the organization. And finally, a consistent security and governance layer. So who can access which data? What's the lineage? Where did the data come from? How old is it? What's been done to it since it's left the source system? All while allowing the data to reside in the source systems and accessing it dynamically on demand as it's needed by the business or the applications. So here's how we define an enterprise data fabric. They enable on-demand integration, transformation, analytics, and use of data across silos, providing the business with the insights and agility needed to remain competitive and overcoming the limitations of previous approaches like data lakes, data marts, and data warehouses. So all of the top analysts now, including Gartner and Forrester, are all uh, recommending a data fabric approach to data management to their clients. In fact, Gartner, in a recent report, just wrote that the data fabric is the future of data management. And Forrester is advising that a data fabric strategy is vital for business innovation in large part because it addresses the limitations of traditional approaches to data integration and data management in handling real-time connected data and business user self-service with automation, speed, analytics, and intelligence. Gartner writes that the data fabric is one architecture that can address the extreme levels of diversity, distribution, scale, and complexity in organizations' data assets. And part of the reason is that it not only connects your existing data silos and production applications, but it can also breathe new life into your existing data management projects like data lakes, data warehouses, data marts, and so on. OK, so there can be a lot of components involved with building an enterprise data fabric. So here's one view. It's an architectural diagram from one of the Gartner reports that I just mentioned. So notice how each of the different layers can require a number of different data management services or products. And so as most of you know, our flagship product, the InterSystems Iris Data Platform, provides a wide range of best-in-class data management capabilities, all built from the ground up in a single platform. And so it can make it faster and easier to implement and maintain an enterprise data fabric architecture. And again, as uh, most of you know, InterSystems Iris Data Platform provides relational and non-relational database management capabilities, operational and analytic database capabilities, a complete set of integration and interoperability capabilities, and built-in analytics for everything from analytic SQL to machine learning and natural language processing and so on, and a complete development environment to make your developers more productive. And now with version 2021.2, it includes full server-side support for Python. And so while you can't buy an enterprise data fabric, there's no such product, it's an architectural pattern. Products like InterSystems Iris can speed time to production and simplify architectures by providing many of the needed capabilities all in a single product. And so here's what we've seen as the typical requirements for an enterprise data fabric from some of our customers and partners 
and the production implementations that we're doing with them. And also, as defined uh, by the analysts who speak with many different organizations in a, in a wide range of different industries. So there's data connectivity and data pipelining and data prep and data processing and persistence and integration and transformation. There's process orchestration and human workflow, full lifecycle API management, security, access, search, discovery, and then a whole range of analytics capabilities uh, all required. And so for those of you that are already using InterSystems Iris, you already have these capabilities out of the box. And if you're running on Cache or Ensemble, for a limited time, you can migrate your existing licenses at no charge to InterSystems Iris and gain all of this functionality. So there are many, many different kinds of applications that can benefit from the implementation of an enterprise data fabric. And here I want to share with you what we're seeing from some of our customers uh, across a variety of different industries, including financial services and manufacturing and supply chain and, of course, healthcare. So there's enterprise business management reporting, which is about giving the line of business executive, uh, executives access to live data from across the organization with the ability to better understand the information being presented, allowing them to drill into the data and ask new questions and see where the answers lead them, especially now with the addition of our new adaptive analytics capabilities. So it's much different than just providing the business with static reports. Similarly, live risk management and liquidity management, regulatory reporting, uh, we're seeing applications in open banking, uh, in supply chain, supply chain control towers, and supply chain visibility, which provides uh, both visibility and control for organizations both inside the, the organization and across uh, their uh, extended supply chains. Industry 4.0 in manufacturing is about the convergence of OT, or factory floor signals and processes and data, with their IT systems and data. There's many different kinds of digital transformation initiatives that we're seeing, uh, applications for data science and machine learning, where it's dependent on providing access to data from different sources uh, and lots of data. Data warehouse modernization projects where our customers are implementing data fabrics with built-in analytics capabilities that incorporate real-time data feeds so that they can analyze information and events in real time and remove the latencies associated with moving static data into the traditional data warehouses. And then we also see customers that have existing data lake projects that want to use the data that's stored in the data lakes and make it more us uh, usable and more actionable. And we see many, many other applications in different industries as well. So I wanted to share with you a couple of actual implementations that we're doing with our customers. So the first one is from a project at a global bank. And the problem they wanted to solve was that they'd been generating batch static reports for the business heads. And it was taking a long time to generate the reports. And then the data in the reports was between 10 and 14 days old on average. So they wanted to make it so that the managers would be able to drill into live data and navigate and understand the data better so they could make better decisions. So here's a simplified architecture diagram from the implementation. So they're ingesting data from uh, different business applications for things like positions and market value and exposure and cash balances, uh, as well as from flat files and from their existing data warehouses and their data lake, all in different formats and with different interfaces and protocols. And so here we see how the data flows through the data fabric uh, through the different services and the different stakeholders for the data. So there's a data integration layer, there's the uh, database management layer, there's lineage, there's a common semantic layer, there's built-in security, uh, built-in analytics, uh, data exploration for business user self-service. And by and large, that's the purview of the data stewards to make the data available through a variety of different interfaces 
to the line of business, both in terms of applications and the tools that they're familiar with using, to be able to visualize and drill into the data. And so the difference now is this customer is able to make the information available to the business on demand and allow their business users to drill into the data and ask questions of the data, including real-time streaming data on demand, providing the line of business managers with better insights into the current state of the business, certainly compared with populating static reports with data that was 10 to 14 days old, enabling them to make better and more timely decisions. Here's a different customer implementation uh, we're doing for another one of our customers. So this customer is one of the largest fintechs in the world, and they service most of the large banks as customers, providing their customers with dozens of different fintech applications to help them run their businesses. So this customer implemented an enterprise data fabric to connect data from their systems and from also their customers' production applications with their fintech applications as a real-time bi-directional data gateway. And this is actually their slide that they use in their pr uh, presentation. So you can read their vision. And if you look at the stack, you have the data integration layer, data storage, data processing and analytics, data access, data government, uh, governance, da uh, data management. Uh, and so we're seeing many of these types of enterprise data fabric initiatives now from our customers. Right? And as you can see, there can be many different functional components involved in building one. Okay, so what I wanted to do is, is briefly share with you what we've learned as best practices from implementing many of these projects with our customers. So first, think about uh, coupling top-down governance with bottom-up implementations. So involve the C-suite and the office of the chief data officer uh, for top-down governance and structure, but look for bottom-up projects that add value, uh, uh, quantitative uh, value to the organization in relatively short sprints. Simplify architectures and speed time to value. And so, you know, again, there can be many uh, different uh, data management services uh, that are required in building an enterprise data fabric. And so the more that you can reduce the number of individual uh, components, and certainly with the use of a product like InterSystems Iris Data Platform, you can simplify architectures, speed development, uh, and certainly simplify ongoing maintenance. Be sure to integrate with your existing technologies. It's not a rip and replace, and it's not an alternative. An enterprise data fabric uh, should integrate seamlessly with the data silos and the production applications, and also with your data lakes and your data warehouses that you already have, adding value to your existing infrastructure. Incorporate embedded analytics. So we actually call our uh, implementations of an enterprise data fabric, a smart data fabric, because a, a wide range of analytics capabilities are built directly into the fabric so that you don't need to move the data to another environment for analytics and also for highest performance uh, and support real-time and near real-time applications. So being able to access and use real-time data, streaming data, along with non-real-time data uh, is key for a real-time dynamic uh, enterprise data fabric. And finally, uh, be sure to support uh, flexible deployment options. So some of our customers are running in public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, uh, on-prem, uh, and so being able to support multiple deployment options is key. So if you're running on InterSystems Iris, you can implement a smart analytics-enabled enterprise data fabric today. And if you're still running on Cache or Ensemble, you can still migrate to InterSystems Iris at no charge, but you need to act by the end of this year. So for more information, please visit intersystems.com slash data fabric or intersystems.com slash migrate. Thank you.